All right, all right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is episode one. This is number one. Yeah, number one, the unknown African. I'm in the house. I'm in the building. I'm excited about this because um, I've been going back and forth, you know, procrastinating, thinking to my mind, should I do this podcast? You know, should I start this again? Because I've done one before and I'm like, you know what? I can't keep making excuses. You know, I was making excuses, you know, giving all kinds of reasons why I, why I should hold off. First it was, well, you know, let's wait for a good opportunity. Let me, let me get the best equipment. Let me find the right person to work with. Meanwhile, I'm the right person. I got everything that I need to make this thing happen. So I said to myself, I can't, I can't keep pushing this off, man. Procrastination is the assassination of a good attitude. So my attitude was getting beat up. Every single day I'm going to bed and waking up thinking there's something else I'm supposed to be doing. So finally, I kicked myself in the pants, ladies and gentlemen, and I put this thing down on paper. I said, we're going to call this podcast The Unknown African. And here you are on episode number one of The Unknown African. Yes, man, for those of you who know me, and, and for those of you who are seeing me for the first time or listening to me for the first time, wherever you are, welcome, welcome, welcome. And thank you for giving me your ear and your attention. My name is Alfred Kainga, a.k.a. comedian Alfred Kainga, right? And um, I live in Dallas, man. I'm out here in the Dallas Metroplex DFW, been in the comedy game. For about 18 years, you know, um, originally born in Zimbabwe, Africa, Southern Africa. Yeah, that's my roots. That's where I'm from. Um, and then I'm out here, man, in, in Texas. I'm pursuing my dreams of, uh, you know, this stand-up comedy game. But that ain't what it's about today. We ain't going to be telling jokes Although we're going to be funny, I'm going to be funny. I'm always funny, always, even when I don't even try to crack a joke, it always just comes out. So that's going to be happening during this show too. There's going to be funny topics we're going to talk about. I'm going to tell you some funny stories. But I just wanted to, to get this started, man, and, and get it going. So shout out. To the sponsors of this show, that's whatever is in this cup. <laughs> mm hmm. I gotta woo, wet the whistle. <laughs> you gotta shh, wet the whistle with a little sum sum. Um, I, I'm 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 working all the kinks out. You know, gotta get the little background. I I got that that little uh background that you're seeing there, man. I put this together because I was like, I gotta have something. To make the, the studio look good. I'm going to call this room a studio. But this is really like my guest bedroom. And um, I got them little dried up reeds. From uh, 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 home home goods or at home. Some kind of home store. Uh, together with that log. Which is crazy man. Because my cousin back in Africa can really make this stuff right here. You don't even need to make it. You just go outside and pick it up. And, and he could be selling this stuff right here. Look at this. This is just a piece of wood. A piece of tree just cut up. They, they did absolutely nothing to this tree right here, to this branch or whatever you want to call it. They did absolutely jack to it. But if I told you I spent almost $50 for this piece of wood, and these reeds right here. <laughs> and and then I paid another twenty dollars for the vase. Bro, that's easy business. We over here struggling trying to figure out what we're gonna do to make money. Just go out there and cut some branches and, and, and let them dry up. 
they didn't even spray paint it. I mean, it's just as is, son. But I bought it, and I'm from Africa. I should be ashamed of myself. My ancestors are shaking their heads right now that I spent fifty dollars on this. I need to call my cousin and tell him, look, man, you always wondering what type of business to do. There it is. Do do the dried up uh, branches business. You know, these white folks out here will buy this stuff and, and call it decoration. Unbelievable. I mean, money just out the wazoo. But anyway, uh, back, back, back to topic. I'm just here, man. I'm going to have fun with everybody. And we're going to talk about a lot of different things. Um, and, and, you know, you can always ask me questions. I'm, I'm you know, I'm going to be posting this on all my social media pages, uh, on all the, the, the podcast channels. You can catch me. Uh, the Unknown African is in the house. Yeah, we're going to be doing this. And, um, and, and it's, it's going to be so much fun. I'll also be announcing everything that's going to be going on with me. Announcing everything that's going on with my career, you know, all the shows that I'm going to be doing and where I'm going to be and what I'm what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to achieve. So hopefully at the end of the day, this podcast will inspire somebody, will motivate somebody, will encourage somebody and maybe even just educate somebody. So I don't I don't know what you're going to get out of it, but I promise you, you will get something we will impartake knowledge, whatever is going on in our minds together. It's a journey for everybody to, to take. It's not going to be any other podcast, you know, because people are like, man, there's a podcast for this. There's one for that. What, why, what, what makes your podcast different? Well, because I'm in this chair. There's only but one Alfred Kainga. I haven't made a junior yet and I haven't met a senior Alfred Kainga yet. So something that is within me is important for me to partake and give out unto the unto the world. Let me let me start preaching right now because I'm I'm getting into it. You know I'm feeling it. But that's exactly what we're gonna do. You know uh, we go through things in life every single day. Sometimes you wake up you don't feel like going on. You know, I, I have those days, you know, I've had days where, you know, life is just kicking my my ass to so to speak. Right. Uh, but then you you got to take you got to take life by the titties of the, the hog. That's what you got to do. You got to pull the nipples of that pig and say, we're going to milk something out of this. I don't care what it is. But we're going to get something. Shake that tree until something falls off. You know, those are all the little nuggets that I learned uh, when I was working in my uh, old job. So now I'm, I'm telling you my story. When I got to America, I was in college. And uh, my first my first job that I had, dude, was um, I was working at Whataburger. Yeah, first it was Whataburger. I didn't last at Whataburger but two weeks. Um, and then from Whataburger, I moved to a Jack in the Box. Boy, that's why I cut my teeth in, in flipping burgers. What? I was like the burger flipping master. You know? And, and them tacos. And my shift that I used to work was like, you know, the two o'clock shift, the midnight to morning shift where all the drunk people coming from the club you know, they got the beer munchies, the alcohol munchies. They come through and they order all kinds of all kinds of stuff, man. That was me. And I'd be on that drive through taking them orders, man. And and you know, be, <laughs> I was taking orders like, you know, like my life depended on it. And the town that I used to live in, I used to shout out to Gainesville, Texas. I used to live in Gainesville, Texas. That's where I was going to college. And uh you know, everybody that I worked with in the store, uh, in the Jack in the Box restaurant, they were from predominantly, you know, Mexican, Latino, you know, Ecuador, Nicaragua. So they hardly spoke English. And, and, and you know, nine times out of ten, when you're working with somebody who's got a different language, you know, they ain't, you know, the Latin people ain't trying to learn English for shit. They know it. They know how to speak it, but they ain't trying to 
They ain't trying to speak. They ain't trying to go out their way. Like, come on now. Like, listen, we're going to stick to our Spanish. You either going to learn or we're just going to be looking confused. That's, that's their attitude. I love it. <laughs> so the ladies I used to work with, I remember Vera. You know, she said, me llamas, it's Vera. Vera be like, you know, Alfredo, pero you necesito tu estudia español, meaning like you got to learn how to speak Spanish, bro, because hey, we ain't, you know, speaking English with you. So I started learning, man, and they were teaching me these little Spanish phrases. That's how I learned my Spanish, the little Spanish that I know. Next thing you know, one day, you know, some guy, because what they used to hate was when somebody, if I was working on the drive through right, and if some guy came, and, you know, the Mexican guy, they do that shit too on the driveway, uh, on the drive through I'd be like, hey, welcome to Jack in the Box. How can I help you? They'd be like, ah, do you speak in Spanish? I'd be like, nah, hold on. Let me get somebody. So I'll go get one of the ladies in the back to come and, and take the order. And they didn't like that. They got to a point where like, nah, man, you got to learn this language so you can take this order. But I'm like, damn, I'm in America. I thought... I thought we spoke English. I came all the way from Africa. I polished this little English. I was ready. Man, I I read all the Harry Potter books, all the Shakespeare. Man, I was ready with this little English that was in my backpack. Little did I know I wasn't going to be able to use it <laughs> for nothing. As soon as I got to Jack in the Box, I needed to learn another language. So one day I finally got it. One dude pulled up, man. He's like, yo, que pasó? Is it speaking Spanish? I said, si, sí, no, hombre. Anda la pues. And he's like, yeah, necesito dos tacos y un coca. I said, that's todo. I was loving it, man. And the girls in the back like, yeah, Alfredo. So I habla español, way. I said, I know. We going to smash tonight. <laughs> I didn't say that. That's uh, totally inappropriate. Uh, but it was cool. That's how I got to understand the dynamics of uh, of this place, right? Of Texas, to so to speak. You know, down here in the dirty south, the triple D, Dallas. I love this place, man. Um, so from there, I left Jack in the Box because I felt like, you know, they were not paying me enough. Uh, I needed to broaden my horizon, and so I jumped over and I went to Walmart. Walmart is where uh, I cut my teeth in the retail game, you know. Uh, I was an overnight stalker, though. You know, I used to stalk groceries overnight. Well, I was good at it, you know. We'd be out there competing, like who can stalk the groceries, you know, the fastest, you know, the most cases per night. This, these were the incentives. You know, this is where you see that you've come a long way. Where you work in a job where they'll lay out like 60 to 100 cases of groceries in the aisle. And then, you know, all your marks get set, go. And my little skinny African ass was out there just whoop, whoop, cutting up boxes and stalking them. Because I wasn't trying to get trying to get fired, boy. And I remember one brother that I met, I became really good friends with him. He said, Alfred, you, you, you tricked me out, man, because... You always smiling when you come to work, man. You always having a good time. You said you remind me of coming to America. I said yes, my brother. It's just good to be here. <laughs> you know, I was just excited, man, because I knew where I came from. Right, coming out of Africa, this was an opportunity. My family's waiting for me to do good, so I can start standing the money. And and I, I left Jack in the Box because it was minimum wage, straight up, right, like seven dollars or something like that. And and I jumped into into Walmart and I'm making eleven dollars an hour. Boy, this is like back in two thousand and three. Man, I'm thinking eleven dollars an hour. Man, I'm about to be rich. What? And my store back then was Ross, baby. Ross and Marshall. Yeah, man. You take that little three four hundred dollar check. You pay you a couple of bills. That's about four roommates. So, you know, rent was about $300, about four roommates. Oh, you had surplus cash by the time you're done paying your little bills. And you in college, you take your ass to Ross for the clothes. And then the shoes, you go to Foot Locker, get you a deal, you know, buy one, get one half off. 
So you go with your homeboy. You're like, look, man, let's split this little deal right here. Get a couple of Jordans. What? And 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 I got a crazy, funny story. Uh, first time, a dude, when I found out about Ross, I'm in college, right? So, you know, I'm going to college and I see this brother. Man, he was wearing the flyest stuff, right, man? He was always rigged up. Bro was wearing, you know, his Nike, his FUBU. Bro, had, you know, bro was even wearing Kalkanai. And this is in 2003. Like, Kalkanai was already out. But this dude had it. And I was like, damn, man, I approached him one day. I'm like, bro, you always fresh. Where do you get your clothes? And this man gave me a response I had never heard in my life. I couldn't make what he was saying. I said, where, where do you get your clothes? He said, man, I, I can take you out there. Roush. I said, what? He said, Roush. I'm like, wow, okay. I didn't want to press too much because I didn't quite comprehend what he was saying. And I didn't want to make, I didn't want him to make fun of me, right? So I go back to my other roommate who was also from Africa. And I told him, I said, bro, I found a dude in college, in my class, dude is always fresh. And I asked him where he gets his clothes and he going to take us. You know, he told me he going to take us this weekend. So get ready. And, and dude was like, so what's the name of the store? I said, I don't know. I think he said it's called Brock's. He said, what? I said, that's exactly what I said. Can, can you decipher what Ralph says? He said, nah, I don't know. I said, we'll wait and see, man. We'll wait and see on Saturday when he takes us. So we all excited. He comes and picks us up. Two little African boys in his truck. And we excited to go Rouse, you know. So we pull up at the street mall and he said, that my stove right there, y'all. That my stove right there. We look up and it's R-O-S-S. -S. I said, bro, that's Ross. Ross. If you really want to say the African way, that's Ross, my brother. Ross. Why you got to say like Ross? No, we got to go Ross. <laughs> I said, dude, Ross. But we were in there like kids in a candy store, man. We got all kinds of clothes. Fresh outfits for $39.99. Looking good. Shout out to Rouse. Yeah. That was one of the funniest things that had happened to me. Um, so I always get this question. People always ask, was it difficult for you to assimilate to, 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 to this new life, right? Coming out of Zimbabwe, moving to, to America. How difficult was it for you? You know, it might be somebody who's in Africa right now thinking of making that transition and just, you know, other people who are curious, like, how did you how did you make that? Um, we, were, we were very fortunate, right, uh, that Zimbabwe was already diverse. You know, we were we were a British colony. That's the background of the of the country. We we're colonized by the British. Um, our, our education system was 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 English, British oriented. Um, and it's very modern. A lot of people don't understand that we come from a modern society in Africa, uh, where, you know, we, we had, you know, electricity, water system, you know, basic utilities, you know, the roads are paved just like they are here. Uh, and, and no, we, we had to go to the safaris too, to go see the wildlife. It wasn't just no animals roaming around, you know, grew up in the city. So, that's that that was life for us just running to go catch the school bus like everybody else you know public transportation was in abundance uh you you know begging for cash for for pocket money from my parents just like everybody else my mom would be like she i'm giving you 50 dollars. this should last you all week and that money lasted me till tuesday you know so it was the same struggles uh but, you know, we watch TV, you know, we grew up with, you know, the cool thing actually about about Zimbabwe was we had, you know, more media from different countries. We watched British, you know, television uh, or British sitcoms, British shows, British movies, American movies, American sitcoms. Uh, music was the same, you know. Uh, so, you know, Jamaican influence, I mean, crazy Jamaican influence. We grew up listening to dance hall, you know. So it was, it's a very, very diverse place. The high school that I went to um, was mixed, 
right? We had, you know, we had the, the, the black kids, we had the white kids, the Indian kids, and, uh, you know, the, the mixed kids called the AKA colors. That's a whole nother topic. Uh, because in America, when you say colors, people look at you like, no, what? what you talking about, bro? You know, but it was different. And um, it's a different uh, way of um, explaining demographics. Uh, but we'll, we'll talk about that soon, you know, when I get into the, the deep background of Zimbabwe. But that's, that's how it was. So, you know, the official languages, you know, in my country, we got Shona, we got Ndebele, and we got English. We got some other ones too. But, you know, so in, in school, you know, all our teachers were giving us instructions in English. Um, so, you know, we, we spoke it. And, and so it was easy for me. It was easier, I might say, uh, to come out and, and, and adjust, right? It wasn't completely like, you know, smooth sailing. But it was easy. That there was no language barrier. Uh, there are some other African countries, right, that were colonized by the, by the French, by the Portuguese, Spanish. So they tend to speak those languages from their colonizers. That's just the reality of it. So, you know, when you hear uh, an African guy with a heavy accent, because, you know, they're used to either speaking French or, 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 or Portuguese. So that's the beauty of, of us Africans, man, that we're able to, to adapt to whatever conditions that we we are put under, this was colonization at its finest. It's you know that's why you have a name like like Alfred. Like what type of name is that for an African? Like Alfred, really? Like the Butler? Like the British Alfred? Like what happened? You know? So because that's just what they did. They tried to whitewash our history and 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 make us hate our own culture to a point where we give our children white british names yeah that's how it was but i'm african all the way and i'm and i'm appreciative of the um you know the way i was raised so it, it was cool it was really really dope um i i remember in 1998 1998, maybe 99, one of the biggest concerts we had in Zimbabwe was the Lost Boys when they landed in Zim to come and have a concert. That was like the first hip hop concert I ever attended. Lost Boys from New York, you know, it was it was wild, you know. Let's scoop the beamers in the band to all of my ladies in the end. Or put your hands up. Into the hood, East Coast, World's Coast, and Worldwide, boy. I, we was in there, man, with our food, but thinking we from New York. Boy, we had no clue. <laughs> that was an amazing time. And the, one of the reasons why they came to Zimbabwe was, you know, the Lost Boys, they, they used to perform at a at a club in New York where they got their start. The place was called Club Zimbabwe. It was owned by a by a Zimbabwean dude who gave them a platform. So they were always giving him a shout out and they wanted to know where he came from. And they sure did a concert in Zimbabwe in Harare. And that was an amazing, amazing experience. I'll never forget that. Um, that was my childhood, man. Just we just grew up normal. It was it was fun. It was dope, you know. Uh, you know, other kids had you know there were other more privileged kids. You know, they had you know Nintendo games and you know, Sega, all that good stuff. I would see that stuff in school because my mother was a was a single mom and she was a nurse. She wasn't about to spend all that kind of money on on toys, bro. Like I went to a really really good school and that was as good as it went. She was like, hey, I'm paying for this school fees. That is all I can do. Go get your education. She wasn't interested in, in me getting all this fancy stuff, but I saw it from other kids and I got to play with it, you know. So so it was fun. It was really, really dope. Oh, another badass concert, man. I remember 1993, Shabarex came to, to Zimbabwe. That was an amazing thing right there. I couldn't go to the concert because I was only 13 years old, but he was... He was playing in a stadium in the hood where my grandparents used to live and I was there and I could hear it all night. I was just sitting outside, man, just listening to Ting Aling Aling, that's how I'm sweet. Ting Ting Big Time, I mean, that time freaking. I didn't know what the hell they were saying back then, but the shit sounded good. Shabarex, you know, Bujubantan came to Zimbabwe, a lot of downfall artists. This is back in the 90s. So I'm talking about my history before I came 
I came to the States. So it was easy for me to come out here and be like, yo, what's going on? You know, but, you know, the shocker was, was the food. Oh, yeah, the food, totally different, you know, totally, totally different because I was excited coming out here. I had never had McDonald's. You know, I was really pumped up to have McDonald's because we didn't have a McDonald's in Zimbabwe. So I'm thinking to myself, man, as soon as I get there, I'm going to land and I'm going to go and get me some McDonald's. Boy, was I disappointed. I was shell-shocked. I said, this is what you guys rant and rave about here. The food in America is not as good as African food. Hands down. I'm just going to get mad at me all you want. The food in America is too processed, man. Look at me now. Look how big I got. Bro, I, can, I gained weight in about seven years. I was like, damn, I used to be beautiful. Like, nice. See, this twig right here, that was me. That was me. You know, eating organic food didn't work out. I played one sport. I was a soccer player. You know, that's all we did was run and walk and eat and run and walk and eat. Simple life. Then you come out here and you're eating all these processed foods and now you're driving everywhere. You drive to the drive through You get your fried chicken while you're sitting in the car. You drive home. You eat your fried chicken sitting on your couch. You drive to the toilet to take a shit. You drive to your bed. You don't walk for nothing. You drive to the mailbox. Listen. Often people drive up to their mailbox, reach out, grab the mail, put it back in the car, and pull into their driveway. Nobody walks for nothing. So when you got that type of food going on, it is not healthy, man. It is not healthy. You know, so I'm out here now, 43 years old, trying to lose weight. People pray for me, but it is what it is. That's just the way life goes right i'm having too much fun this is our first episode number one i thought i don't know how this is going to go as a one-man podcast but it went great so far so good um listen today is february 26 2024 february 26 2024 number one the unknown African is in the house. I'm going to be at Hyena's Comedy Club this Sunday, March the 3rd, 2024. March the 3rd, I'm going to be at Hyena's Comedy Club. I'm headlining out there. Um, it's going to be a really, really good show. So if you get to hear this uh, before March 3rd, 2024, come through. Let's have a good time. It's going to be fun. I'm going to be talking about all kinds of crazy things. I am the breakout of the year comedian for 2023, people. You better not play. I got these jokes. But I'm trying to show them to you. Only if you come to the show. That's all I can say. It's going to be fun, man. This is this was dope. This was really, really dope. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please don't, don't hesitate to subscribe on my YouTube channel. Subscribe uh, on Instagram. And I am at Alfred Kainga on everything. That's A-L-F-R-E-D-K-A-I-N-G-A. -E you can see it right there. I got it all plastered on it. I hope you liked it just as much as I did because we had so much fun today. We're going to do it again next time. I'll see y'all people. Have a good one. Good night. Good day. Good morning. Wherever you are, be blessed. Love you.